about it and it's not a secret, it is that Apple ecosystem that really hooks you and locks you in. And in all transparency, I am very deep into the Apple ecosystem. So I do hope you find some value in some of my favorite Apple devices and how do I use them throughout my day. So if you're ready, let's just go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're on to one another, my name is Jamie and on this channel we do like to cover the different forms of technology I like to use and I enjoy, some lifestyles mixed in there, and some, some practical tech solutions that you might someday need. So if that sounds the least bit interesting, please consider joining the 10% of you who are subscribed down there below. That's right, I know 90% of you guys watching right now aren't subscribed, but that's okay. I'm still gonna share with you my Apple ecosystem. And the Apple ecosystem is certainly a solution that makes our lives so much easier as the devices are all synced and connected in real time. You can finish a phone call that you were having on your iPhone and then transfer it over to your Mac or even your Apple Watch. You can view your notes you captured in class from your iPad on your iPhone or your Mac. You can even finish listening to the songs that we're playing through your AirPods on your HomePod. Now, all of this really does sound like magic and sometimes it even feels that way. From the moment you unbox whatever your devices are, whether it be an iPhone, MacBook, iPad, HomePod, AirPod, Apple Watch, then you use Apple services such as Apple Music, Notes, News, Arcade, and even the Find My Network, the experience is seamless. Now, this is not gonna be a deep dive into these Apple devices, so this video will just be too long. I already have plenty of videos on the channel that cover a lot of the specs, hardware, and my day-to-day -day uses. This is just a general overall collection of my Apple ecosystem that I use on a daily basis. And I managed to contain them all here in this Apple bag. And a little fun fact, did you know that this bag is made of 100% recycled paper. That's right, even the little handle is made of paper. Never knew that, fun fact. But let's go ahead and dive right in and pick out the first Apple product that I use on a daily basis. And of course, it's the iPhone. But the iPhone itself, even though it's absolutely simply amazing, it's probably the one that I use the least. And a big part of that is because I leave the house a smaller fraction of the time. So if it's not to make phone calls, which I rarely make anyway. Its main function is just scrolling through social media and just really quick text responses. The camera on all iPhones are simply amazing and they really set it up with the iPhone 13 Pros. But the true moments I want to capture, I like to use my mirrorless Nikon cameras. I don't even use my iPhone as my alarm as I don't want it to be the very first thing that I grab when I wake up in the morning. Instead, I use my bedside HomePod mini that plays a soft little haptic sound that continues to build over time until I do finally I managed to wake up. Now, don't get me wrong, without the iPhone serving as a hub for all of these other Apple products, a lot of the things that I do would not be possible. All right, let's see what we got next. We have the Apple Watch. Now the Apple Watch is a device that is always by my side and I truly rely on to get me through my day. There have been so many times, circumstances, when I've left the house and I've forgotten my Apple Watch and I literally turn around to go back and get it because I am at a loss without it. And a big fact to that is that closing all three of those rings is a goal that's built into my day. And even though I do try to stay as active as I possibly can, the one that I struggle with is the stand ring. So that getting that little pulse, that little reminder on my wrist that is probably a good time to stand up is super helpful. And of course, the Apple Watch is capable of doing way more than just fitness tracking. But one thing that I do appreciate is that Apple has kept the Apple Watch wristband structure exactly the same. I've built up this assortment of different Apple Watch Watch bands that I get to customize to fit my mood, my outfits, and even my activities. All right, and moving on, we have the iPad. Now the iPad certainly is a very niche product, but I do find that it helps my productivity throughout the day, depending on the task that I'm accomplishing. And this one here is still the iPad from the 2018 generation of the iPad Pro, which introduced this classical design that is still around today. And this 11 inch size is my absolute favorite for portability and productivity. And of course I do like to use the Apple Pencil to capture any notes in my number one note taking app, which is OneNote. And probably my largest use case for this iPad Pro is Apple Music. So I am a yoga instructor. So again, I really do like the screen size for moving through my playlist quickly when I'm teaching my classes. And I really prefer the touchscreen experience over a trackpad when navigating through Apple Music as well. 
And my newest Apple product has quickly become my absolute favorite Apple product. And that is the MacBook Pro 14 inch. Now, if I could only pick one Apple product, it would absolutely be this MacBook Pro 14 inch. It has quickly become my absolute favorite. And again, I do have other Macs, iMacs, but this is the one that absolutely, ever since it's come out, never leaves my side. And since this guy here is the newest, I will give you just a little bit of an overview of some of his specs and its features. It is, again, the 14 inch size with the M1 Max chip. It does have that gorgeous Pro Display XDR screen built right on in. It has 64 gigabytes of memory, 32 cores of GPU performance, and two gigabytes of SSD. Now, if I could go back in time, I would definitely sacrifice some of that RAM and GPU performance and upscale some of that SSD performance up to maybe around four terabytes. I have not run out of internal storage yet, but I do intend to keep this thing for a long time. So that's probably the only thing would absolutely change. So I think we've made it to the bottom of the bag. So we'll wrap things up with my AirPods of choice. And that is gonna be the AirPods Pro. And primarily that's because I do find them to be the most comfortable for long periods of time. I like that they have customizable tips that fit my ear just perfectly. I wear these things for long periods of time when I listen to podcasts, which I really enjoy doing. I like that there's the option of active noise cancellation if you wanna shut the world out, or transparency mode if you need to bring the world in. And I really do appreciate the fact that they're sweat and water resistant, which is something that I cannot say for the cushions or the headband on the AirPods Max. Their small and portable size really make them great for traveling, and it's pretty impressive that they're able to pack all of that battery in such a small size. I do have a little bit more of a detailed video on all things AirPods, so if you are interested in finding the one that's right for you, I have a video link down below. Oh boy, and there you have it. Those are my favorite Apple devices and how they tie me in and suck me into the Apple ecosystem. I'm very curious of which devices you use on a daily basis, so please be sure to drop those down in the comments below. Low. And of course, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, you know that I appreciate each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you down in the comments section. Don't forget to like the video on your way out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And until next time.